Hey, welcome back to another episode of Whiskey Row. So today we're bringing you a store haul direct from the Speakeasy. I'm very, very excited because we have, well, eight bottles of whiskey for you today, plus one extra I'm throwing in here at the very, very beginning. If you end up enjoying these store haul videos, if you end up enjoying anything on Whiskey Row, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you have not. Normally on these store haul videos, I really, really like to kill off bottles and, and share with you what's, you know, what, what we're finishing up here in the speakeasy, what, what Jamie and I are drinking in the house. Well, today, unfortunately, I don't have any bottle kills. Some people have made comments like when we've, you know, bottle killed four bottles uh, at the beginning of one of our videos. Uh, that is not that we've drunk that many bottles since the last time we filmed. We drink many, many samples from many bottles. We try different things. We film. And when the bottles are empty, I show them on the bottle kill, meaning they're just leaving the speakeasy. There's, it's by no means an indication of how much we drank between the last filming and this filming. Uh, with that being said, we haven't killed anything off since the last time I filled some store hall. So let's just dive right into it. And first off today is this delicious, delicious bottle of... Well, it's rum. It's, it's not even whiskey. Uh, but that being said, I am incredibly excited for this bottle of rum. This is a Chairman's Reserve at St. Lucia Distillers, Chairman's Reserve uh, Finest St. Hold. Let me hold that up there so you can see it good. It's a single cask. Now, this was sent to me by Bill, who's a great subscriber and Patreon of the channel. And he picked this up for me, helped me get a hold of this thing. And this was from Benny's uh, up in Illinois, I believe is where it is, or at least he's from Illinois and Benny's is somewhere close to there. And this is a single cask cask rum 15 year age stated which I like my rums and get up to 15 years that's going to be pretty tasty the type of cask that it was finished in is ex bourbon so it's a rum finished in ex bourbon cask which if you take the sweetness of a, a good aged rum and you mix it with a nice bourbon barrel I have pretty high hopes for this one so I'm very very excited for this one and oh my this thing is coming in at 123 point eight proof it's a 61.9 apv i'm doing the math on the fly hopefully i got that right this is this is the kind of rum i get really really excited for now some of you out there do like a nice aged rum for sipping on i can't fault you because it's really really good outside of, of bourbon and whiskey i really enjoy my rums so do have to tell you for all of you rum fans out there that i i picked this up i'm excited to have this in the speakeasy uh, this was, uh, Bill picked it up for me. It was $99. And anyway, thank you so much, Bill, for helping me get this. And I can't tell you how excited I am to have this bottle. I know this is Whiskey Row. That wasn't whiskey. Thanks for indulging me every now and then and sharing some of the love I have for a good rum. That being said, let's get right back into bourbon. Homegrown Boone's Bourbon comes from Charleston, South Carolina, aged minimum of six months in American White Oat charred cask. I really don't know why I bought this thing. So this comes in at 117 proof, and this is not normally one that I would have rushed to the liquor store to buy. However, we were at uh, Mickey Finn's, I believe is the name of the place, in Florence, South Carolina, and Jamie had sent me a list of things to try to grab that she was interested in that are supposed to be good for kind of the kind of stuff that she likes. And this was on the list that she sent me. So I picked it up for her. I can't remember exactly how much this was. I think it was right around $30, $35. Uh, again, this is a, you know, a smaller distillery up and coming and she wanted to try it and I picked it up for her because, you know, I'm always encouraging her to explore bourbons and find stuff that she will love. Just like I would encourage all of you to go out there and find a bottle you love. Well, we'll put it on her shelf and we'll crack it open one of these days and see how it goes. Next up in this store hall, Eagle Rare. So uh, with the whole change in the Virginia ABC, and I'm not going to go on a rant about the Virginia ABC's changes and how much I like them or don't like them because I don't like them. But that being said, in the new system, I haven't gotten very much good except for Eagle Rare. If you haven't had Eagle Rare, it seems like every store hall video I have another Eagle Rare because, well, frankly, that's about all I can get these days out here in Virginia. Uh, that's okay. It's a 10-year bourbon. It's age dated. Uh, Buffalo Trace, fantastic. They're not quite single barrels, but they're almost single barrels. Different bottles of Eagle Rare, they can be have some some different variation because they're not really small batching them they're just dumping the barrels and uh, sometimes they get juice from one into the next and they don't want to go uh, through the bottle of actually guaranteeing a single barrel so anyway uh, all that said if you haven't had an eagle rare for 40 dollars 10 year age state of buffalo trace magic it is it's good it's definitely good worth 40 dollars every day i would probably pay upwards of 50 or 60 if i'd never had a bottle i'd probably say 60 if i'd never had a bottle and so if you're in the store and you can't decide if you've never had one and you like bourbon for 60 bucks, I'd grab one. All right, up next, and I'm pretty excited for this one, Bolveni. 
So we've got a Bovini 14 year Caribbean cask. Now this is a scotch that is matured in rum barrels. So I have a real thing. So one of the things about when, when you mix the bourbon aging with rum barrels, like with four gates and some other stuff that I've done, uh, or I've had, those are really, really good to me because that rum barrel really kind of brings this nice brown sugar flavor. And I absolutely love a brown sugar flavored finish. True solid bourbon, legal bourbon, but leaves that nice lingering brown sugar. I love that finish. So some of you had recommended that I pick up the Balveni Caribbean cask. I found it finally. I'm very, very excited for it. Unfortunately, this thing's only coming in at 86 proof. It's a Balveni and I haven't had any Balveni scotch that I did not like. For you bourbon aficionados, those who won't cross the bourbon line and, and, and into the scotch world, uh, humor me for a second. But for those of you that do like scotches or maybe you're considering scotches, I've heard this is a great bottle to help bridge the gap from bourbon lover to scotch enjoyer. A lot of good whiskey out there. If you can't find uh, a really, really nice bourbon uh, or whatever because of how things are going in the, the bourbon market and stuff's crazy hard to find, these can just sometimes be found sitting on the shelf and it might be a really good pour, particularly if you are into single malt whiskeys. This might be a great bridge into the Scotch world. Uh, I would probably highly recommend it. I haven't had it yet. I did get it from the Virginia ABC for retail. It's not something they regularly have around, at least my stores, uh, but it's it's around. It's not hard to find. And I, I am excited for it. I've got, I'm getting quite the collection of scotches on the floor that need to get opened up and tried because my Scotch shelf is full. The floor is getting full of Scotch. And I feel pretty good because I'm expanding the scotch arena of Whiskey Row. I know that this is primarily a bourbon channel and I'm not going to be doing a lot of scotch videos. I will be doing some. Hopefully it's entertaining even if it is scotch. You can just laugh at me, talk about band-aids and, and tar and whatever other off flavors that, that sometimes show up in scotch that bourbon lovers don't enjoy. Now we're going to go back into the bourbon world with Still Austin. This is a cask strength Still Austin. See if I can get that reflection to work for you. But this still Austin's coming in at 118 proof, so cast strength, bourbon whiskey. On the back it says age a minimum of two years, a little on the young side, so it's an up and coming distillery. They're trying to make their own juice, and I love that. I love it when distilleries are making their own juice. You source it until you don't have to anymore and do your own thing and, and make your own juice, and, and I love it. So uh, this one I got from Eugene uh, Boituco, a great longtime supporter of the channel, great Patreon. Uh, he got it for me uh, at cost. I'm not a, a huge Texas whiskey fan. I, I've had some hit or misses with Texas whiskey, but but I've got another Texas whiskey here coming up in a minute, and I'm I'm I'm, at, I'm even more excited for that one than I am for this one. But I am excited for this one. Uh, try another distillery uh, doing some interesting things down in Texas. And uh, thank you so much, Eugene, for helping me get this. A few minutes ago, when we did the the Bolvani Caribbean Cask Finish Scotch, did I say it was the last uh, non bourbon of the night? I didn't but it's whiskey at least. And we're gonna talk about it because I like it. This is, I can't say this. You guys have corrected me so many times on how to say this and I can never get it. I can get some scotches. I'm getting a scotch pronunciation up a little bit. This one, I think it's called Napo. This is a 12 year, this is a store pick from Mission Wine and Spirits out in California. AW got this for me uh, for cost, it was $50. But this is a, is I'm pretty excited about it. It comes in at, uh, 80, 92 proof, so it's a little higher proof than standard. It's gonna be interesting to see how this one compares to the standard of this that I have, because I do have uh, one of these that is a 12 year age stated, but it's not a pick. So maybe the pick's got a little bit of, little bit of, little bit of nicer game uh, than the, the standard barrel. Thank you so much, AW, for helping me get this. And it's, I think, my first Irish whiskey store pick, which is pretty awesome. Back into the bourbon game. Now this, is something that I am crazy excited for. This is one that I have wanted for a very, very long time. This is Iron Root Harbinger out of Texas. Let me show you this gorgeous bottle. I don't know if you can see this, but this is all like a medallion on the bottle. It's just really, really pretty. This is a very, very well done bottle. I love the way this thing looks. Uh, Iron Root Harbinger coming at 115 proof. It's won some awards, I'll say that. And I'm really, really excited to try this one. This one's been on my list. I have an Iron Root Harbinger XC, which is like the, the little brother of this one. It'd be like the Stag Junior to the George T. Stag. Iron Root Harbinger, which would be the, 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 the dad. And then the little, the junior would be the Iron Root Harbinger XC. I think that kind of works. Anyway, but I'm so excited for this one. Coming out of Texas, doing some really, really good stuff. I've heard great things about this one. And I'm really, really excited to have this in the speakeasy. Open it up and give it a try soon. I promise. Last non-bourbon of the night, I promise. And we only have one more bottle to go. 
actually, I can't even say that. That wasn't true either. But stick with me because this and the next one, I'm very, very excited about. Now this is an Aberlauer Abuna. Awesome. I've heard so much good about this scotch. This is an Aberlauer Abuna. Comes in at 118.8 proof. I think this one is. It's 59.9% APV. And for a scotch, that is out of this world. The legend is, is they found an old, old, like 100 year old bottle from, from Abelauer years and years and years ago. They started drinking it, tasting it, They and they tried to mimic it. And this is the mimic of that old thing because back in the old days, they didn't really cut whiskey. Well, back way in the old days, they didn't cut whiskey. They would just take it straight from the barrel, put it in the bottle. Then people started trying to cheat the system and they started cutting it, overcutting it. Then they started doing bottle the Bond Act stuff. Long, long story, but the point is, this is a throwback to the old, old scotch days. And this thing coming in at 118, 19 proof, it up for me at cost. Couldn't be more excited for this thing. Thank you, AW. Heard in Spanish, Oloroso Sherry Butts, without the use of modern chill filtering methods. So this is a non-chill filtered scotch. This thing should be awesome. Last up tonight, I thought I was gonna have another bourbon for you, but I don't, it's a rye, but it's a really, really good rye. So this is Michter's Barrel Strength Rye, coming in at 109.6 proof. Now that may seem low for a barrel strength, but you have to remember that Michter's uses a very low injury proof when they put stuff into their barrels. Uh, it is way below industry standard of 125. And so for that reason, their barrel strengths come in a little bit lower proof, but the flavors that come on those Michter's uh, lower entry proofs, it's one of the reasons I love Michter's is they, it, it costs them more money to put the whiskey into barrels at a lower proof. In theory, it provides a more rich bourbon experience. Uh, if you wanna know more about it, go to Fort Nelson for the Michter's experience and they'll tell you all about it. It's pretty awesome. Uh, but that being said, this is, I already have one bottle um, that I'm, I'm working on right now. It, this is fantastic. I was so, so excited. Uh, Christian Stevens, longtime supporter, patron of the channel. Uh, thank you so much, Patreons, for all your support. Uh, helped me get this. It was $188, but for this bottle, this is something I'm totally willing to pay for. And it's, to me, it's worth it. To me, it's worth $200. So aside from one from South Carolina and two from Virginia, everything else was from all of you out there in the uh, YouTube universe. So whether you are supporting us directly on Patreon, thank you so much. Or whether you are just watching our videos, coming on our live streams, hanging out with us and we're having fun, whatever the case may be, we really, really appreciate all your support. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And until next time, find a bottle you love.